Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Thursday, November 23rd, 2017. It's Thanksgiving here in America, so happy Turkey Day to you and happy StarCraft to everyone here, because we're going to learn some damn StarCraft today. This is my third attempt to do the start of this particular episode because I kept continually messing it up, and at some point, you may as well stop trying to do it live and really nail it. And this is what you're seeing me nailing it. In today's episode, we're going to focus on all the cool little tips and tricks for your workers. This includes things like optimizing how they mine, optimizing how they scout, using them effectively in combat, all things worker we're going to be covering, as well as in the next episode right after this, we're going to talk about large-scale army control. I don't think that this will necessarily take a full two hours, and that's totally great because you still all have to return and eat leftovers because in America, Thanksgiving is about eating way too much with friends and family. So, first of all, I'll have you appreciate the fact that not only do we have Terran, Zerg, and Protoss all here on screen, but we also have the computer non-existent. That's right, we're not going to lose to the AI. Yes, so sick. Um, I want to start at the very beginning of the game and talking about mining techniques right at the outset. Because this tends to be the very first thing that you see in a game of StarCraft, is all of your workers just hanging out here. Um, and you want to be able to optimize how quickly they wind up mining. So first, I want you to notice that when I right-click on a mineral field, my SCV will accelerate, and then it will decelerate as it approaches this mineral patch. Notice how it kind of slows himself down. And so we want to have as little of that going on as humanly possible for the purposes of setting them up. This is why often when you see early game splitting, you'll see pro players click on the mineral field behind it and then right click on the closer field in order to decelerate it. Once the SCV begins mining, oftentimes it's not as useful to keep clicking and doing that sort of micro throughout. But this is, again, one of the things that you'll see a lot of people do where if I want to mine this mineral field, You'll often see me click here, click this top one, and then click that bottom one in order to, again, avoid this acceleration problem. This is also true for workers, just with general movement. You'll note that if I am moving here, and then I keep issuing this SCV more commands, it stays at full speed. Whereas if I click here, and then shift click, it slows down at each waypoint. And so... Very often, when you're doing these types of worker splits, you want to make sure that you are making your dudes mine from the closest possible mineral field. There was a little bit of SCV combat, but that's fine. We're going to set up the start of the game split. Um, and I'm going to be building workers from the start of the game so you can see some of the importance of assigning your workers to the correct mineral patch. If I have these two guys, let me actually just have them both stop mining here. If I have each mine from these two mineral fields, I want you to notice how many more trips our closer SCV is generally going to be able to take. It's really important. Uh, with Terran, it's a little weird because SCVs have like a super deceleration when they wind up going to these mineral fields. So this is why the spam clicking is important. Notice that this little worker, just due to some of the weirdness, is actually taking a little bit longer. Which is a little weird. And again, this is why I just brought up this technique of if you're doing this, make sure to click on the mineral field that is past the one mining. Because if I do this, I can actually just get him to literally mine minerals slightly faster. And there was a very famous series between Nada and Goodfriend where good friend, a Terran player, not a Terran player, were playing on a map, Arkanoid, and they literally did identical builds, except Nada just seemed to be slightly ahead. And the reason that he said why is that he was doing this kind of microing with his workers early on. As the game continues, you are absolutely not going to want to be spam microing your workers as you saw me do. You don't want to be doing that at all, because it's just a waste of resources. As in, it's a waste of your time in terms of clicking resources. But if you're at the start of the game doing your splits and you actually have the ability to pay attention to all of your workers, doing these little micro tricks is very, very nice uh, in terms of accelerating you up to like 1,500 minerals at times. So let's pretend we're doing the starting split. 
Very commonly, players will click on one that causes all the workers to cluster, and then it winds up being hard to select the extra workers and sort of spread them out again. It can often be very useful to click on the farthest away patch that you want to be mining, and then click your workers from there. So the game begins... Actually, hell, we can actually just restart this mission. I can just show it to you, man. I don't even need to keep the thing loaded. Very often, um, you'll see players box and click the far away one and then peel off the ones that are coming in like this. So that way it's a very even split. And again, going for these very close fields as the first ones because they are naturally going to be closer overall in terms of distance. And using a little bit of the spamming, we can get them to mine a little bit faster. Again, you click past the mineral patch, and then you right-click on the close one, like this, in order to get them to mine very quickly. Again, this is just at the start of the game. You're only getting, you know, an extra 50 to 100 minerals at certain timings, um, which is very important in early game builds, but I mean, if you're late game and you have a billion things to control, don't worry about this. Again, this is just the early game. And part of what's nice about me restarting and showing you this is that there's literally nothing else for me to be doing. Literally nothing else for me to be doing. So I want that to be your first big worker mining lesson. You can click the deep mineral patches to get your worker to accelerate and then right click on the closer patch to get them to begin mining immediately. The second thing that I want you to look at is how I'm going to make sure that every single worker is mining a different mineral field. I'm starting with these four close ones. I'm trying to get this fifth closer one as well. And I'm trying to mine these farther away ones last. So you notice how I clicked this one and then clicked into here to make sure it would accelerate properly. Let me go ahead and build a pylon because I'm going to want to keep building workers. But all we're focusing on is the fact that I have every single probe mining. Oops, I didn't hit the pause button. After this ninth probe pops out, I'll have all nine probes on nine different mineral fields. And you see how this one is not being mined on? Great. I'm planning which one I want to send it to. No, not a screenshot. Where's my pause button? Oh, holy shit, you can zoom in. Holy fuck. I had no idea. All right. <laughs> Frightened me. It literally startled me when I did that. Um... So I want you to think about this second lesson with mining, is that you want to think not, oh, I'm going to box and send it to the same mineral patch, box and then send it to the same mineral patch, box and send it to the same mineral patch, but to plan which one you actually want your worker to be sent to. This is much easier. The first thing I showed you about these little nuanced accelerations, that actually takes some practice. The second thing of making sure each individual worker is going to a separate mineral patch, very easy to keep track of. But this is a huge boon to your early economy. Again, another 50, 100, 150 minerals in early game. That's the difference between having a Dragoon for defense and not having a Dragoon for defense. So. Ah, delicious. Hmm, so good. So, this um, extends a little bit when you get past nine workers. You'll note that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then barely in frame is the ninth um, mineral patch. What do you do when you have more workers than mineral fields? So I've slowed it down. You'll start to see these probes moving around like this one just arrived and couldn't mine here this one's going to try to mine from this one but it's going to be occupied and it's kind of like a random search when these workers are heading towards a mineral field they'll just start hunting for somewhere to go and during all the time again as you continue to watch here where there's six workers among these five mineral fields if no one or if everyone is mining at the same time, such as if I do something like this, look at how inefficiently our probes are going to split themselves up. Some of them will return mining. Probes and drones will, and SCVs will always return back to the same mineral field that they returned a mineral from. So you're seeing how long it's taking to actually spread out and make any use of this patch. Like, I'm just look at this one patch. Look at how damn long 
it is taking for any worker to go to this top mineral mineral patch. And I have 12 workers on nine mineral fields. This is why it's so important to spread out those workers early on. Right now, I'm literally cutting out one ninth of my economy, which sounds like an arbitrarily weird number, but if you've mined a thousand minerals at some point in the game, that's a little over a hundred that you are not mining. Look at this, it's still, I'm actually amazed. That's actually appalling. That's like really bad. So what players will do is they will carefully, oh my God, things are moving in slow motion. Ugh, ugh. It's weirdly harder for me to manage it in slow motion. So what players will actually do is they will try to help their worker pathing as much as humanly possible. They'll try to make their workers split among the mineral fields as they're heading down there by trying to see who's about to do a return trip. So we'll see that once I get to nine mineral fields, but let's watch this probe. Just follow this one that's selected here. And notice that he's about to finish. So this probe that just finished probably can't trade off with this one who has just started mining. But let me actually put on a cheat code so I can continue to build as much as possible. Uh, and then let me operation qual to just get another probe out. Cool. So at this point in time, I have nine workers split among nine mineral fields to optimize. Where does this one go? Look at this probe here. Right as it's starting to get finished, I want this one to arrive at. So this takes a little bit of practice to do, to be able to see which one is about to be finished. But if you start doing this, you can wind up with these nice things where you have three workers perfectly efficiently mining two mineral fields. So look at these two going, and then I send this one in right now, and I spam click so he doesn't wind up moving. I send the one from the closest to the back one. Notice how I'm able to get them to trade off. Oops, messed that one up a little bit. But we're trying to get three workers to just carefully mine among two mineral patches. And part of the trick is to just spam click to make sure that the worker stays and doesn't do any sort of weird bad pathing. So spam clicking here. Spam clicking the back one again. And now we've done a better job optimizing our workers. So this is why you see so much rearrangement in pro games of their early workers, because they're making sure that no probes are doing any weird drifting. Thus far, I've done a pretty excellent job of making sure that these three probes only mine exclusively from these two mineral fields. Now you might say, okay, what am I supposed to practice? Well, at the start of the game, you don't really have anything to do until you get to like 12 supply. You'll be building an overlord, making a depot, you'll just be sitting there just at the starting of the, just at the start of the game is the only time I really want you to focus on these types of worker micro things. Again, make sure you're clicking far away and near away patches and alternation to accelerate. Make sure probes are mining from different patches. Use this cycling trick to make sure that you can ensure that probes are not moving around and poorly selecting their own mineral, mineral field until later. Once you get past 12, 13, 14 supply, just ignore it. Don't worry about it, man. You've done a good enough job. Unless you're a super duper pro, you don't need to spend the APM doing that sort of nonsense. There's one last trick that I want to showcase for uh, just the mining side of things, uh, starting in the main base, which is if you get, get, get the hell out of here. Ah. If you are mining from this mineral field, Sometimes workers will take weird paths like this. In modern StarCraft maps, the minerals are often placed such that workers will always automatically path on the inside like this. But sometimes a worker says, hey, what's the fastest path back home? It technically is up and left. God, that guy tucks himself in there really nicely, man. You should see in the old Brood War maps. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see players do things where they will build a pylon right here to make sure that the worker 
will automatically path himself in more of a diagonal like this. Look at how much more nice that is if I cancel it. It should still be okay because this is a good location. But if I'm mining from this outside edge, if I'm mining from this outside edge, this pylon helps pull in my worker to the correct side. So, on Fighting Spirit, this map just has amazing arrangement of minerals to help guarantee that you actually have a nice, optimized early mining pattern for all your workers. But on other maps, you might have to do things like make buildings here, or, even easier, you send the probe here, and then you send him down, so he starts off as close in as possible, as opposed to him spawning and you just right-clicking out here and then him accidentally mining on the far outside. So there's some uh, sort of corollaries that we can make to this, which is, what if we have an expansion? What's the optimal way to transfer these workers over? Very often, you'll see players do this thing where they'll just box, click, and ignore. Once again, the real difficulty of StarCraft is trying to figure out how to allocate your attention as the game goes on. So if you're like at six base, and this is your seventh, and you send 12 workers over, that's okay. I want you to know that's okay. Or if you're overwhelmed on three bases, because you're a relatively new player, and you're going to a fourth, you don't have to worry that much about super optimizing the split. Took a little bit of time, but now our 12 workers are mostly mining correctly. But if you're sending, we've already talked about how workers don't make the best decisions on their own. So this is why you'll see 12 selected, right click here, shift, deselect, right click here, shift, deselect, right click, 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 shift, deselect, and then just send all the rest over. Oh my god, the computer player arrived and is going to kill me now. Thank god I'm done with worker micro. Oh, thank goodness we're done talking about <laughs> mineral optimization. Those early transfers, again, are a very important way to collect extra resources. So once again, if you are intelligently clicking your workers at the back fields and at the forward fields, doing this worker cycling on three mineral fields, making sure that workers are spreading themselves out, and doing a very good split to your expansion, you'll actually begin to accumulate hundreds of extra minerals to the point where you will be surprised at how much it feels like you're cheating. It's great. Okay, what I want to do now uh, that I'm done talking about the early mining techniques, I want to talk about some construction techniques for workers. So I talked a little bit about this in the base management episode, which is fine. Um, whenever you're going to send something to build, it's extremely good practice not to build all the way over here and then to send the thing back. You want to build directly underneath. So that way, you are building the structure as early as humanly possible. This is um, pretty important when it comes to early game build order timings. I'll see players do this a lot where, you know, they'll have... Um, they'll be waiting until it says 12,500 to be able to build a nexus. And you'll note that if I'm sending my worker really early, I can get here right around the time that I have enough minerals for it, and I can build it really quick. By trying to make myself build underneath the probe, it trains me to send my, my thing earlier and get my stuff built exactly at the times that I want to get them built. Whereas, I've seen many Zerg players who will be like, alright, I have 300 minerals, go, let's count the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds of mining is actually a pretty significant amount. You'll be at around 450 minerals if you send your worker out when you are at 300 minerals. So you want to be certain that you are sending these things out uh, and building underneath the structure. Also, if you are building something, make sure to constantly send your workers back. This is a super easy habit to fall out of, especially if you're Terran where you want to build the thing, hold shift, and then right-click back. 
so that way your workers always come home. This is really easy to forget if you're a Terran player. And let's say you see that there's some air units that are going to be getting built. And you're sort of panicking. Oops. You're panicking and you want to throw down a lot of missile turrets at once. I'll see players do this where they'll build these two. And then they'll build one over here. And then they'll shift click this one back. But then these two workers will just get lost. They'll just forget about them. It's especially problematic if you're playing against a Protoss player. Where against Protoss, you want to build turrets and threes. Because that's about the amount to be able to shoot down an Arbiter easily. And then you'll just forget about these three workers and you'll lose three workers. This is going to accumulate to hundreds of minerals over the course of the game if they're not mining. So making sure that every min or every worker is properly shift clicked back is really important. And I want to showcase something that uh, can be a little bit of a convenience. Where I'm going to slow this down a lot. Most players think that you need to go build a turret, shift click back. Build another turret, shift click, go back. Build another turret, shift click, go back. Most people think that that's the only way to get each of these workers individually to head back home. And this is not true. Let me slow it down again so I can show this little trick. What we can do is we can actually build, 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 select all three, shift, right click back. Now, all three of them have received that same Q command, and we've only had to execute that command once. This is super critical, I, I would say for Terran more than anyone, because you're very often sending out like five workers at a time. And one thing that's uh, a little weird is that if, if the Terran structure is building, and I hit shift right click, nothing happens. If a worker is in the midst of making a structure and you shift right click back, it doesn't do anything. So, how do we avoid this? Um, I think, let me see if this still works. This used to work. A way you, the, the proper way to avoid it is when your worker is right about to be there, you just build and then shift click back quickly. Because it can receive the shift click command beforehand. But if your worker is building, and you have another worker selected, even though this one is building, you can still hold shift right click. And when this worker is done, you will have cheated the move command in. Damn it, it doesn't work anymore. Come on, that worked in patch 1.08. Okay, ignore me. <laughs> All right, that trick didn't work. That used to be a way to cheat in a command for a worker a long time ago. Okay, so never mind, everything's actually okay. All right, things are as clunky as you believe. SCVs cannot receive any shift Q commands when the structure is building. So, <laughs> sick. Okay, so that's some of the construction stuff. Let's talk about the drone drill, shall we? Oh, this is going to be so awesome. Okay. Okay, so we've talked about early game mining techniques to get extra minerals here and there. We've talked about some basic construction and shift queuing in order to keep all of our workers mining efficiently. There's a really weird thing about the worker, which is that as you see these SCVs are mining, they're able to pass through each other. Like, no problem. In fact, I can tell everyone to go mine at this mineral patch, and there's no problem at all. They're just like, okay, Sean, if you say so. Cool. Damn, no more coughing. Um, gosh, look at this. This is appalling. Holy shit. This, boy, this really wants them to make me re-stress what I was saying at the start of this lesson. Please split your workers up. But anyways, uh, workers can pass through each other. They can only pass through each other when they are gathering. You see how the gathering uh, command card is in white, or sometimes the return cargo? If I have all of them here, they're not colliding because mining workers do not have a collision box. If you hit stop, though, they regain their collision box. And then they force each other away. So, if I have a probe here and I try to click up this ramp, they can't go because the probe has collision. These zealots have collision. So, no can do. 
But if I right click on one of these mineral fields in here, right click like this, it will pass right through these. Pretty neat, huh? So let me go ahead and set this to F2. Let me set this to F2, okay? As in, every time I hit F2, it moves down here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, rewatch the hotkeys and um, micro techniques video. So let's say I have something like this. This is a very common situation that will arise. And let's actually make it a little more realistic. Let's send some Zerglings across the field. So sometimes you will encounter something where a Zerg player will be rushing you and you have sent some uh, workers and a zealot to block the ramp. Because one zealot can't block the ramp versus zerglings. So naturally, if I'm the zerg player, I'm going to be like, oh man, screw this. I'm going to take one of my zerglings and I'm going to start trying to kill these probes that are walling off. Right? So you'll note that if I try to run, if I were to try to run this probe that's blocking the front, it can't actually get through. Death to the sample probe. But this is where we can use this weird pathing thing to escape the situation. Watch, I right click in order to make it attack. F2, right click a mineral field, he passes right through safely. So this is this, this weird worker defense stuff where if I am, let me slow things down quite a bit. Where if I want to do um, defenses with some of my workers and maybe one fighting unit out on the low ground, if at any point the Zerg player is attacking one of my workers, I can select F2, right click, go back to the front and remove this guy from the control group. And he escapes safely through and then I can reselect everything and I can begin go fighting. Now some of you might be going, holy shit, are you serious? And I'm gonna go, dude, don't worry about it. Listen, if you are a new player, you know what you should do? You should just make a second zealot or a third zealot and then expand, right? You don't, you don't have to do the super pro builds where they expand with almost no defenses. The reason you see people expanding with almost no defenses is that they know that they can do these weird nutty worker tricks where they are sub-selecting workers, mining them back all the time, and etc. So another thing that's very useful for this is, let's say for a moment that we have the opposite situation happening. Let me go ahead and move all of the dudes over to here. This is another common situation that will happen if you're a Zerg player. You'll be sitting in your base, happily mining. Again, notice how I'm splitting my workers up even in this example because it just feels wrong not to do it. Um, you'll be happily mining in your base and some jerkish Protoss player will have taken his zealots and he will have clogged up your ramp. You'll be Zerg, you might have some sort of expansion hatchery here. And if you have ever tried to break zealots blocking a ramp, with just Zerglings, it sucks because it's like two Zerglings fighting these two Zealots. It's really hard to do. But what you can do is you can use this technique. Again, I'm going to, this is, I'm gonna hockey as F2. This I'm gonna hockey as F3. So again, F2, F3, F2, F3, F2. I can box all these. Oh, we'll get a good amount. I can right click onto a single mineral patch. I can click on the bottom thing, and now I have what's called a drone drill, where they're all stacked because they're on mining, and right when they go through, I hit stop. Notice how it forces these zealots off their positions, even though the zealots were on hold position. This is a, a pretty common use. Again, notice, hold position, hold position. Nothing's moving them, but you can drone drill them through. Again, right click them all onto a mineral field. F3, right click on this mineral patch. 
and the workers will form this collisionless line until you hit stop, and it forces the hold position zealots off the ramp, allowing you to break through with zerglings. And you can re-drill where you click down here, or then you go, oh goodness, they've re-walled off. Let me right-click back here and then stop. And then notice my zealot keeps getting forced off. Um, this drilling technique, most people know for the um, the famous games where there is like a Protoss player and he has zealots at his own ramp. The Protoss player is defending, and the Zerg player gets vision of a mineral patch in the main base, and cross map sends all his drones, breaking the Protoss' defenses and winning. Um, that, that's not really the most common use for drone drill. Most of it winds up being defensive techniques, like breaking these zealots. Another really common one is understanding kind of how the pathing works with these drones. I will sometimes be in a situation where I'm worried about some sort of attack coming in my main base. Maybe it's Zerg vs. Zerg. I'm worried about Zerglings coming in or Zealots coming in in Zerg vs. Protoss. I can send all my workers to mine at this extractor, and you'll notice that all of my drones actually wrap around and hug this sunken colony. So you can imagine if I'm being attacked by Zerglings, I can come up like this and I can stop and I will actually force the Zerglings to path away from the Sunken Colony. Let's see it in action. All right, drones mining normally. And then, oh my gosh, here come Zerglings. Click here, stop. Just listen, you, you hear that there's fewer Zerglings attacking in this. And I can sort of repath to keep trying to force these Zerglings off. Now, normally, my drones would actually be firing when I hit the stop command, but these are my own circlings, so you can simply make believe. And this is particularly useful if you are up against uh, a Dark Templar, and you don't want the Dark Templar to get to uh, your sunken colony because it's not done building, or in uh, sometimes in a Protoss versus Protoss circumstance. Uh, let's see, where's the positioning here? I think it's like this. So, hey, I'm popular, nice. All right, it's my mom. She wants to wish me happy Thanksgiving. Sometimes, if you're trying to build a cannon because there's a Dark Templar coming, the Dark Templar could just come up and kill the cannon. Oops. But if you build it right here, again, you can use this, this drilling technique to bounce back and forth all around this cannon ensuring that the Dark Templar never actually gets to the cannon until it's done. There's a very famous game of free Protoss player defending against Dark Templar with zero detection and a photon cannon that had just started building, but he was using his probe glitching so successfully to push the, um, push the good old DT off. Um, and y y you'll see this sort of defensive stuff happen quite a bit, where... Um, if I'm the Zerg player, and let's say I don't really have any units, what happens if there's an attack happening at my front, killing this off, and I just think, man, five Zerglings is not enough. I'm going to be building more to try to support. Okay, it's still not enough. I can do this trick with drone drilling, or I can just go somewhere on the map. Somewhere on the map. The Zealots are attacking my stuff. And thanks to sending these drones to some mineral patch on the map, they can then come in here and participate in the fight a little more easily. Because, I mean, I, I think that you'll, you'll note that if I just box a bunch of workers and I go, Oh my gosh, I need defense at my front, and I right-click them, they glitch and push and shove each other all over the place because they have collision again. So we want to make sure that if we're sending our workers to be helpful in a combat situation, we want to be trying to find, oh wait, that's right, I left that unit in the middle of the map. Oh cool, I can now send my workers to that patch and they will drill their way to the front. A la, ta-da. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? 
great. We talked about some of the drilling mechanics. One of the things that's really nice to note about um, this sort of glitching mechanic that can happen. Let this be one of the most important simple-ass organizational techniques when you want to make a building. Let's say right now I think, ooh, I want to build a robotics facility. If I just click over here, follow this probe, he gets stuck. That probe was pretty lucky. What if I sent this guy over here and told him to... Oops, I hit the wrong button. What if I told this guy here to go build this? Sometimes they can get super stuck and actually add some extra seconds on. A great way to solve this is whenever you need to send a worker out, just spam click your geyser and then move it right through. Because your geyser will only really ever have two workers there. So you can just go spam, 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 and then pull the guy out. Or you can be really cute. What Bisu does is he gets the guy that just arrived back, and he pulls him off and sends in another worker. And then shift clicks this one back to minerals. So again, this is take this guy off, bring this guy over. Just to make sure that the structures are building in a timely fashion. All right. Now it is time for one of my most favorite things, worker scouting. This is one of the big piles of tips that I wanted to talk about today. How do you do good worker scouting? Do these have speed? Shit. Shit, I forgot this guy had, had Zergling speed. Is there a way to un-upgrade in this game? Can I do that? I think I'll start as Provost. Great. So this is fine. Let's just send these to mine. Let's find out where our little dude is. All right, so we have a Zerg player up here. One of the most important things in all of StarCraft is being able to keep the scouting worker alive. And to keep it alive, we're going to use all sorts of combinations of the tricks that we've just seen um, with workers gaining and losing collision and all that stuff. And we're going to, oh, and there's also the acceleration stuff. We're going to see them all in action. Once again, remember that workers accelerate and decelerate normally. We can see this as I send him forward. He'll slow down and then he'll come back. Never use shift cues. Never ever use shift cues. If you're just continually issuing commands, this worker will never lose any momentum. So first things first. Sometimes when you are scouting, you will get chased. One thing that's interesting about the StarCraft pathing is that Units do not move to intercept. Notice that as I move to the right, the rest of these units were still going to the side here. So notice as I go down this way, none of these drones will really rush to intercept. If you or your opponent that you're playing against right clicks on your scouting probe, they, they basically go to where you were half a second ago. So, in, I'll actually do this with fingers. In StarCraft 2, if I have a unit here and you have a unit here trying to attack me, it will spline into a collision, right? It'll like this. But in StarCraft Brood War, you wind up in these ring around the rosy kind of situations. So for that reason, you don't want to do hard cuts like this because you'll often run the risk of taking extra damage, especially if you are a fast unit like a Zergling. You want to take these kind of wider turn angles like this. So if I speed this thing up, I want to stress that, okay, what I don't want to do is kind of run. Let me actually activate all of them. Come, attack me. I don't want to take these kinds of hard turns. I want to give myself enough space for big wide turns like this, like turning out, turning left, turning up diagonally, turning up. And again, I don't want to let my probe ever reach its destination. Otherwise, it's going to slow down. 
So keep the probe moving, keep the probe doing wide, big berths. So here's something that will often happen. You'll take some damage anyways, because your opponent will also be microing. Well, I'm just trying to make sure I take it. Ugh. If you're ever in a situation where you're low, go home. Not with, or er, move your camera home. Select a worker, right click on this mineral field. And bring this worker home. Because what's happening? Well, because this worker is moving on to this mineral patch, this worker doesn't have collision with other units anymore. So even if they try to block the ramp, you can just get up. For instance, sometimes if I'm a Zerg player and I kill off the scouting pro, I'll leave a drone blocking because one worker can block fully against another worker. But if this probe is on a right click on this mineral, it just passes right through no problem. And you can continue scouting. So you sometimes see the player doing things like this, where they'll be whizzing around in the main base, trying to see everything that's going on. And then you'll see them just whip up, grab a unit, pull all the way up and right click here, and send this guy home to swap out healthy things. Oh, what the hell? There's a Marine there. Oh! I win. Holy shit, this player. Oh, feels good. Feels good to have cheat codes, man. Feels powerful. So, big wide circles. And make sure that if this probe is going to die, you select another worker. And you send it to this mineral field here. One very important thing to note, if I do not have vision of this mineral field, the, the, uh, the pathing behavior won't work. You must have vision of the mineral field. Let me kill off this guy because I'm a ruthless killer. Yeah. So this probe was sent to this mineral field, but it will not lose the pathing because I didn't have vision of this when I right clicked it. So if I just push this probe into the way, I can actually block this probe from entering up. So again, you must have vision of the mineral field in order for this pathing trick to work. So. I want to talk just a little bit more about some... Where's the Zergi? Good. I want to talk just a little bit more about some techniques to do some scouting with, and then I will be done with some of the worker micro, and we'll talk about large-scale army control. Easy peasy. So if I'm here and I'm wandering around in the main base... Oh, hey, Despi, how's it going? I can use right-clicking on these mineral fields as I see them as great ways to avoid chasing enemy units. So let's say there's Zerglings chasing this probe. I can do things like this. I can threaten his drones. And then I can right-click here, pass right through his workers, and escape again. So lots of scouting involves cleverly right-clicking on these, and then back home on my own minerals to make sure that I'm, I now don't have any pathing as I'm going up. Make sense? Make sense so far? So again, I do have collision because I'm not mining. I do have collision because I'm not mining. Now I don't have collision. Now I don't have collision. Now I don't have collision. F2, click here. Now I don't have collision. And then I want to turn right back around. I can click here, don't have collision. You see me pathing right through. Great. So scouting in Brood War involves big, wide arcs. Involves me doing uh, lots of right-clicking on these mineral fields. Sometimes I'll wind up in a situation where I'm stuck. Let me see if I can get this guy. Sometimes I'll be stuck. F2, right-click here. And I manage to escape. 
This is the art of keeping the worker alive, and why so many pro players are so good at keeping workers alive. Let me see if these guys go back to mining. Ugh. You can do little advanced tricks where you can get a probe to glitch and kill a drone without taking any damage. I'm not good at it, but that doesn't really matter. Come on, dude, it's mine. Ah, oh, well. Excuse me, Despy Cat. I have a show to do. She doesn't meow anymore. She's used to being hurled on the ground. So that about covers the core things that I wanted to talk about with uh, some of the worker tricks in the game. First of all, um, the, the stuff that we began the episode with, the tricks to optimize mining at the start, I would call that the most important by far. Uh, because that is like getting extra minerals at the start of the game, and then you can just outright defend against builds with more units. Despy, you gotta get off. Despy, what's this? Whoosh. Did I throw something? Now I did. Look, it's a bottle cap. Get it, girl. That's the most important thing. I see the second most important thing is this scouting trickery that you see me doing. Using the mining and not mining and moving around, because this lets you essentially see everything that your opponent is doing. Third most important thing that I talked about today, this defensive techniques of using drone drilling and building placement in order to have your uh, workers protecting against melee units or other units by forcing them off ramps, forcing them to glitch through, and you can do some really obnoxious stuff if you're just right-clicking minerals, then hitting the attack button, right-clicking minerals, then hitting the attack button. Your workers will collide and uncollide, collide and uncollide. Your workers will be attacking the whole time, but the enemy units will be getting their asses kicked. Uh, and the last thing, I talked a lot about these little construction techniques to making sure your workers get sent back. This is all just in the effort of optimization and organization. In the next episode, Despy... Ugh. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about large-scale army control. I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to focus on that. It's not going to be too long. I'm going to say about three or four minutes, and we'll return. <laughs>